right, guys. Today we are going to talk about graphing logarithms. So we're going to add to 91 and 92. Hopefully now we have a better understanding of like what a logarithm is. Now we get to graph it. So graphing logarithms. And kind of the super nice thing about graphing a logarithm is because a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential and like inverses just swap X and Y, we kind of already know how to do this because we already understand how to graph an exponential. And a logarithm is going to be basically the same thing. We just have to swap the X's and Y's. So that's super nice. All righty. So on 91, I'm going to put some graph paper so that we can graph. Oh, boy. My tape's not over here. I'll take these in after. And then we have this one here that's going to go on 92. Is, are those the pages I just said? I did. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take these in after just because my tape is far away from me. So, as I said, <clears throat> basically we already know how to graph a logarithm because it is the inverse of an exponential. So if we have a logarithmic function like this, we need to pay close attention to parentheses. Parentheses are going to be key here. If you notice that you have parentheses around a number, then that number is our horizontal shift number. And we want to remember that um, horizontal shift always happens oppositely. So like if I see x plus 2, I'm really going to go to negative 2. Or if I see like x minus 5, I'm really going to go to positive 5. Um, <clears throat> k, on the other hand, if it's not in parentheses, it's your k value. K moves us up and down, and up and down always happens the same way. Now, if you remember, when we were doing exponentials, they had an asymptote that was at K, but because everything is swapped for inverses, our asymptote for logarithms is at H, and it doesn't go flat. It goes straight up and down, so it is a vertical asymptote. Um, the other key thing that we need to notice is our base number. Just like when we were um, doing our exponentials, base is going to be super duper important. Base is going to help us get our key starting points, and then we can shift from there. I also hate that my little uh, diagram right here doesn't have an A value, because we could have an A value out front that is getting multiplied that might stretch us or shrink us. So that could happen, or flip us if it's negative. So we want to look for an A value out front as well. <clears throat> um, so for example, if I had this logarithm right here, I can see that my base is 4. We're going to go to negative 2 and then down 1. So the way that we're going to do that is the same way we were doing our exponential functions, where we're going to build a table and take it through a series of transformations. Now. I sent the wrong one over to be printed here. So it shows us that like our parent table, we're just going to do 0 and 1. We're going to do negative 1 as well, just like we were doing for exponentials. So we would pick negative 1, 0, and 1 for our x values. But because it's an inverse, we're actually picking them for our y values. And then when we plug them in um, to our base, we're going to flip a negative. Um, whenever I plug in 0, it's always 1, and then when I plug in 1, it's always the same. Okay, so we flip, um, 1, stay the same. Then we have to take it through its um, stretch. So if it had an A value, technically like right in between here, I would multiply by A. And then I would take it through its shifts so that we get our overall function like this, okay? And so now we're just really going to practice some to see how this goes and make sure we feel good about graphing. So let's jump over. Alrighty, let's do something like this. <clears throat> y equals negative 2 log base 2 of x plus 2 minus 3, okay? So we're going to build our table, and we want to find all of our key things. So when we're building our table, we start with our x and our y, 
And this time, instead of picking my X's, I'm picking my Y's, which feels very awkward because we usually pick our X's. So for Y, I'm going to pick negative 1, 0, 1, always. And then we're going to use our base. So base happens first. Um, we're going to use our base for X. Okay, so we're doing 2 to the Y power. So when I plug in negative 1, we flip. When I plug in 0, it's always 1. When I plug in 1, I stay the same. And now we need to take it through a series of transformations. So the first thing that I notice is actually out front, I do have an A value. And so I need to multiply that A value by Y. So we're going to do just like we did before. So negative 2 times Y. And so now we're going to have our new table where really the X values stay the same. But now my Y values are going to be positive 2, 0, negative 2. Then I need to shift. Okay, so now we're going to shift. And when we shift, we need to go negative 2 and then down 3. So <clears throat> we're going to take our x values and subtract 2. And we're going to take our new adjusted y values and subtract 3. Okay, so our x values are all the way back here. So half minus 2 is negative 1 and a half. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And 2 minus 2 is 0. And then over here with my new y values, I need to subtract 3. So negative 1, minus 3, and negative 5. And then we should be able to go graph. Um, another handy thing to think about is our asymptote. Our asymptote can be super helpful. Here we always have an up and down asymptote, so an x equals asymptote. And whatever x or whatever number is with x is what x equals, so negative 2 because that can be a really good guide for me. So let's think about this. We're negative and negative. So mostly we just need this bottom quadrant here. <clears throat> okay, so if we go graph now, we're going to go to negative 1 and a little extra, comma negative 1. Um, negative 1, comma negative 3. And then 0, comma, negative 5. We have our asymptote at x equals negative 2. Oh my gosh, I went too far. Aye. Right here. There we go. And so sometimes, even for me still, it's hard to <laughs> imagine what this logarithm looks like. So I always kind of go back to a base logarithm. I know that a base logarithm kind of looks like this shape. And then what happened was that it flipped because of the negative. So now it's going to look more like this. And so if I kind of see that better, I can make my sketch a little bit better. Also, like, I can see that it's sort of going this way. It has to follow your asymptote. So, like, your asymptote is going to guide your line and, like, your curve is going to want to hug your asymptote. And then it just kind of goes flatter over here. So, something like this. Cute. These curves are so weird. Okay, let's try one more. Let's say we had... Hmm, let's do y equals log base 3 of x plus 3, something like that. I always feel like when numbers are missing, stuff can be a little tricky, okay? So always, always, we want to start with our base table. We're going to pick y this time, so negative 1, 0, 1. And we're going to use our base number, which our base number is 3. So we're going to do 3 to the y. And then we're going to flip. Always 1. Stay the same. Now, I don't have an a value, so I don't need to do that step. 
I can go straight to shifting. And so if I think about shifting this graph, I actually only see one other number. And that number is not in parentheses. So that means it's not happening with x. It's happening outside of the logarithmic function. And so this is our k value. So we're going to add 3 to y. So x is going to stay the same. And y is just going to move up 3. So 2, 3, 4. Which also means, like, since I don't have um, a number with x, that my asymptote is at x equals 0, because there is no number there. I'm going to see if I can't maybe fit one more in here after this, because this is kind of a small one. So let's get a, a little graph here going. We need positive, positive. Okay, so my first point is 1 third, so just a little bit comma 2, 1 comma 3, and then 3 comma 4, 1, 2, 3, four. okay, I can totally see that one better, and again, here I have my asymptote, so I'm going to draw that with some color, Boop. yeah, so I can totally see, like, going this way, we're going to hug our asymptote, and then going this way, we're kind of slowing down. Boop, boop, boop. Cute. Okay, I'm going to do one more maybe weird one. So let's say we had y equals log base one-fifth x plus two. Sure, I don't know. I'm making things up. <laughs> Okay, so this one, <clears throat> a little bit different because my base is strange. Still going to pick our y values, negative 1, 0, 1. We're still going to use our base, which is 1 fifth to the y power. Um, negative always slips me, so now we're 5. 0 is always 1, 1 stays the same. I don't have an a value, so I don't need to worry about multiplying. And then this time, again, I only have one value over here, but this time it's in parentheses. So it's happening with x. So that means when I do my new table, I need to do the opposite to x. So minus 2, and y is just going to stay the same. Okay, so we'll subtract 2 from each of our x's. So 3, negative 1, and then negative 1 and 4 fifths. And these all stay the same. Okay. Um, in addition to that, my asymptote can be helpful. My asymptote is at negative 2. And so now we can go graph. And let's see, we're in kind of negative and positive in both. So we'll kind of center our origin like that. Okay, so we're going to graph. We're going to plot 3, comma, negative 1. Um, negative 1 comma 0 and then negative 1 and almost to 2 comma 1 asymptote at negative 2 okay I can see uh, 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 I can see so it's it's like this one but flipped over like I can see how it's doing that but going the other direction and I like normally that would happen because of a negative but I think that kind of happened because of the fraction. Like we're a fraction instead of a normal number. So that's why. Oh, I should talk about two domain and range. OMG, I forgot my favorite. So <clears throat> if you remember, the domain for an exponential was always all. And then range was closely related to our k value or our asymptote. It's completely flipped here. So my domain is restricted by whatever my asymptote is. So here we are greater than negative two, and my range is always all. So that's super nice. Similarly here, so because my uh, asymptote was at zero, my domain is going to be bigger than zero. Range is all. And then the first one we did, domain is closely related to our asymptote, so we are to the right of it. That's why we're bigger than negative two. 
and range is all. All right, good luck, guys.